for All Hallow Tide on Sunday, November the 3rd, I will acknowledge that I stand on the lands of the Yugara people. I acknowledge their elders, past, present, and to come. I acknowledge that the land and the waters of and around this land of the Turbul, Yagara, Yugurupul people, also those lands beside and intersecting with Yugura country, Kwandamuka, Kabi Kabi, Waka Waka, and Gabi Gabi people, and Yagumbe people as well. I acknowledge that this land and the waters of and around this land were never ceded by fair dealing, treating, or any form of a just or honest means. This is, was, and always will be theirs. Wanya, welcome in Yogura. Today is the first Sunday in November, and on the first Sunday of each month, we have a guided labyrinth walk and meditation. Normally, this is conducted in person with a live stream on YouTube and then viewing later on demand. However, due to other circumstances, it is not possible to hold our in-person labyrinth walk today, Sunday, November the 3rd. Therefore, this labyrinth walk is being pre-recorded Quite marvelously, it is being re-recorded on the first day of Halloween, or All Hallows Tide, it is Halloween today, which is All Hallows Eve. Originally, we did record this a week ago, but unfortunately, that recording didn't work. So, somewhere, something is saying, come back and do it again at the start of All Hallow Tide. And here we are. All Hallow Tide is a season of the church's year that looks to those who have gone before us. Tomorrow, in the calendar of the way that I am standing here today on Thursday, the 31st of October, will be All Saints Day. And then on Saturday, November the 2nd, All Souls Day. All Saints remembers all of those who have gone before professing the Christian faith, many of them paying for it with their lives. All Souls remembers all of the worshipping faithful, all of those who may not have been considered saintly, though, as we read scripture, it does say, all of us are saints. So, All Hallow Tide, a time when that veil between the world, where those who have gone before us now are, and our world is gossamer thin. The Celtic religion saw this as a time when the spirits of the other world would weave in and out of the very natural world they lived in. In their world, it was a time of growing darkness. It was the end of the summer period and the onset of winter. So many of the traditions of lighting candles, being able to keep the darkness away as long as possible, all came from that. So, today's labyrinth walk is a walk in All Hallow Tide. It's actually one of my favorite seasons of the year not merely because I have Irish heritage going back a very long way, but I do feel that it speaks to me as a Christian. It speaks to me as a spiritual person, knowing that there are many who have gone before us who we look to, and, inshallah, when we pass over, others will look and remember us. So it's a time to remember, to contemplate. While here in the Southern Hemisphere, of course, it's growing lighter and lighter day by day, and warmer as well too, as we approach our summer. So under Celtic tradition today is actually, or this season is Beltane. But the same is that at that time, the time when there is that very closeness, the thin place on the journey, 
as Celtic spirituality has it. We're so close to those who have gone before. Now, walking a labyrinth. If you've never walked a labyrinth before, there's no right or wrong way to do it. You may enter here, follow the path, thinking, contemplating. Maybe there's something you'd like an answer to. Maybe there are questions. Maybe there are prayers you want to offer for yourself or others. You arrive at the center and you can spend as little or long as you need contemplating in the center of the labyrinth. Then, when you're ready, leave everything that you have thought about, contemplated, prayed about there in the center and walk out. You can follow the path or come straight out, whatever is best to you. You might want to go straight to the center and spend a time in contemplation. That's fine. As I said, there is no right or wrong way to walk the labyrinth. Today, I am the only one here walking the labyrinth. However, if you are ever on a labyrinth and there are others walking, treat it the same as you would walk down the footpath. You will see people coming towards you. Some people will overtake you. You'll overtake some others. We do the same on the labyrinth. We acknowledge that they are there, at least in that space, but we allow them their own space. And pace is up to you, fast or slow. Labyrinths are an ancient meditative art and are found in many cultures around the globe. The one that we have here at St. John's Cathedral is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. The late Reverend Canon Dr. Nigel Leaves caused this labyrinth to be created. It was designed and painted and put together by the Australian labyrinth artist Seda Prest, who lives on Ghana land, that's Adelaide. This is a seven-circuit Chartres labyrinth. Chartres is the great medieval cathedral in France, one of the great splendors of the high Gothic age. And they have, right in the middle of their nave, a grand labyrinth. Same shape as this, but it's a 13 circuit. And it was said that if you walk that labyrinth all the way in, all the way out, you had done the equivalent of a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And of course, in those days, pilgrimages to Jerusalem were extremely dangerous, as well as expensive. So, we are going to walk this labyrinth together. We are going to follow a meditation and a liturgy together. If you'd like to follow that liturgy, I advise you to go to our cathedral website and you'll see a page on the labyrinth there and you'll be able to download today's walking notes. All of our labyrinth walks that we have recorded since 2020 are there. You may like to download a finger labyrinth as well. We have a copy there. Or you can approach our cathedral shop, either in person or online, and hold in your hand a wonderful handheld labyrinth based on the Chartres labyrinth as well. Whichever way you choose to do it, I'm so pleased that you are with me today, either live on Sunday, the third, or at another time. You will see that I will be walking today with these. I have with me these Anglican prayer beads. They're also available in our cathedral shop, and I find them very helpful in my meditative practice. Whatever you use, I pray that it will be a wonderful experience for you. So, if you have the labyrinth walk, walking notes together, let's go. Let's walk into All Hallow Tide. Anything that is in bold type, let's say together. Life is eternal, and love is immortal, and death is only an horizon and an horizon is nothing but the limit of our sight. The Anglican priest and poet and musician Malcolm Geit in the Church of England has written a number of sonnets for the church year, and he has written two magnificent ones for All Hallowtide, 
one for all saints and one for all souls. We will do firstly the one for all saints. If you would follow along with me. Though Satan breaks our dark glass into shards, each shard still shines with Christ's reflected light. It glances from the eyes, kindles the words of all his unknown saints. The dark is bright with quiet lives and steady lights undimmed, the witness of the ones we shunned and shamed. Plain in our sight and far beyond our seeing, he weaves them with us in the web of being. They stand beside us even as we grieve, the lone and left behind whom no one claimed. Unnumbered multitudes he lifts above the shadow of the gibbet and the grave to triumph where all saints are known and named the gathered glories of his wounded love. As we commence our walk and time of meditation together, we will say this prayer praising our Creator. If you would say the words in bold type with me. Worship God in the grandeur of creation, God's majesty in the pounding waves, God's strength in the wind, God's creative work in the volcano, God's destructive work in the tsunami, God's love in the flickering fire, God's emptiness in the desert, God's constancy in the seasons. Worship God, give thanks, make peace. We're now going to walk the labyrinth together. I will be playing some music, and the music that I will be playing is from the Australian guitarist, Gareth Koch. This is a piece called The Fragrance of Paradise. It's his response to the early medieval Trouvere and Troubadour stories. It's a beautiful piece, and I hope that you will find it meditative for you as well. When I have finished walking the labyrinth, or we have finished walking the labyrinth together, please join me here again, and we will follow a ritual to close the labyrinth and that wonderful sonnet from Malcolm Geit for All Souls. So, let us walk into the fragrance of paradise.
So now that we have walked the labyrinth together, we follow a ritual to close the labyrinth. We open it and we close it. If you would follow along with me the text from John's Gospel. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Do not be astonished at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and will come out those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. For the blessing, this marvelous sonnet written by Malcolm Geith, All Souls, a sonnet, a last beatitude, is one of the most beautiful and gentle acknowledgments of all those faithful souls who have kept not only the church going, but so many other parts of our society and community alive and thriving. Many names that are not known by many others. So please follow along with me for All Souls, a sonnet, a last beatitude by Malcolm Guide. And blessed are the ones we overlook, the faithful servers on the coffee rotor, the ones who hold no candle, bell, or book, but keep the books and tally up the quota, the gentle souls who come to do the flowers, the quiet ones who organize the fate. Church sitters who give up their weekday hours, doorkeepers who may open heaven's gate. God knows the depths that often go unspoken amongst the shy, the quiet, and the kind, or the slow healing of a heart long broken, placing each flower's so for a year's mind. Invisible on earth, without a voice, in heaven, their angels glory and rejoice. To finish our time together, we will pray the body using the prayer of St. Columba of Iona. Praying the body is actually an ancient ritual found in many faiths. It's a way of connecting your body to your mind and to your soul, a three-way connection. Praying the body is a beautiful set of actions. And these praying the body actions match the prayer of St. Columba. So I will demonstrate it to you, and then I will ask us to do it three times together. We start and finish in the same position. My dearest Lord, praying hands here at the heart, be thou a bright flame before me. We make the symbol of a flame at our heads. Be thou a bright star above me. Reach up for the stars. Be thou a smooth path beneath me. Stretch our arms out wide, because that is the path that we follow a long and wide path of our lives. Be thou a kindly shepherd behind me. God's loving arms around us, and the same loving arms that we use to give comfort to others. This day and forevermore is the last line, and we come back to here. So, We'll do it three times together, praying the body to the prayer of St. Columba of Iona. My dearest Lord, 
Be thou a bright flame before me. Be thou a guiding star above me. Be thou a smooth path beneath me. Be thou a kindly shepherd behind me, this day and forevermore. My dearest Lord, be thou a bright flame before me. Be thou a guiding star above me. Be thou a smooth path beneath me. Be thou a kindly shepherd behind me, this day and forevermore. My dearest Lord, be thou a bright flame before me. Be thou a guiding star above me. Be thou a smooth path beneath me. Be thou a kindly shepherd behind me, this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for being with me and all of those who are walking this labyrinth in all hallow tide. If you're ever here at St. John's Cathedral in Mianjin, Brisbane, look for our labyrinth. It is a canvas portable labyrinth. It's not always here because we are a busy cathedral church, particularly coming into the seasons of the Advent and Christmas Epiphany. But whenever we're able, you will find our labyrinth here, underneath the great rose window in the northern transept. Anytime the cathedral is open and the labyrinth is here, please come and walk it. Often you will find that there will still be some of our walking notes from our most recent monthly guided walks available to assist, or you can download them from our cathedral website. Our next guided labyrinth walk and meditation will be on Sunday the 1st of December. It is the first Sunday of Advent. It is also World AIDS Day. And inshallah, we will walk a labyrinth walk commemorating World AIDS Day and the first Sunday of Advent. If it's not possible to do that live and in person, it will be recorded. So please follow the cathedral website or the cathedral Facebook page. Also our weekly service notes and our monthly notices which come out in booklet form on the first Sunday of every month. They will have updates on what's happening if changes need to be made. But whatever way you are able to be with us here at St. John's, we look forward to you being in the Spirit with us on our labyrinth. Peace be with you.